Today is April 30th, 2012. My name is Tanya Fincham along with Juliana Nicolasian. We're with the Oklahoma State University Library and we're here in Kingfisher County in Cashin, Oklahoma to speak with Barbara Wickett and Colleen Foster. Uh, so thank you for having us today. We're mm -hmm. glad you're here. And let's get started and have you tell us how your family came to have the land initially. Well, my grandfather Foster got the land, the initial 160 acres that he homesteaded, he got the land in the run of 89. And then the 80 acres that is right next to it, he traded for a team of mules. So, but they, the Fosters came over, they came over on the Mayflower, they settled in Vermont, Tunbridge, Vermont, mm -hmm. wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Tunbridge, Vermont. And then they moved and they eventually ended up in uh, Kansas. In Kansas. And of course it was hot and dry and they couldn't get anything to grow and they opened the lands up and, and you know, manna from heaven, it was gonna be, <laughs> everything was gonna be wonderful. So they made the run of 89, the, uh, my the grandfather grand, and his brother and his sis, uh, grandma, the grandma. Yeah. They all three came. So he was already married at that time. Yeah, he was married. Now she stayed she stayed in Kansas, Kansas. with the children. They already had him. And he made the run and he got, he settled the homesteaded the staked out the land, you know. And then uh, then he went back and they came and built the house and and then her dad was born. And yeah, he's the rest of his born. <laughs> in nineteen one. He was born in 1901. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how many brothers and sisters did he have before they moved then? Uh, five. Okay. Isn't that right? Or four? There's One, five two. children then? Mm -hmm. Oh, there's four then. Uh -huh. okay. yeah. Do you know how or why they chose the particular piece of land? Well, they staked it. So, I mean, they went somewhere else and someone else had already staked mm -hmm. it, so they moved on because they came down the Cimarron River and out of Dover, they said, and, and so then they came on down there, I suppose, because they had water, the creek, and all that. But you couldn't tell where any, no, you couldn't tell where anything was. You had to go, how they decide their stakes? Uh, Dad had written about how they how they measured that and it's in one of these articles that's in 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 this and that's why I say you might want to take a copy of that back but they had a way of figuring that out as to where they put their stakes. Yeah, where they put he their came stakes. on a mule and his brother mm -hmm. and the grandma were on horses. Yeah. But he he rode a mule. And did a dugout or no I don't think they ever had a dugout. Uh -uh. If some of the other Fosters that his brother and then I think it's some of them had a dugout, but I don't know what they had really built. The I don't. House. I don't either. And uh, he he was a carpenter and a farmer both, and uh, I think right away they built a house. And as I said, that this is the house, and just just looking at the house, it uh, to I think, me it looks like quite a. Quite a house for back Didn't then. The lumber came from Guthrie. Could have. I think the mm -hmm. lumber came from Guthrie. But you know, for for that, if that was a house, unless they added to it, maybe they added to it. But uh, that's a big house. That's a big house. It is. And I remember the, I remember going upstairs, and it was, you know, it was very narrow, real, real narrow, and very, very steep. <laughs> I don't know how they managed to to do it. Because Grandma Foster was, uh, she you can tell she's a pretty hefty woman, and she had diabetes, and she died in December uh, the 18th in 1941. I was only four years old, and so I don't remember her all that well, but uh, she had diabetes, and she had to have had an awful lot of trouble getting upstairs. If she did get upstairs, she might have stayed downstairs, I don't know. But there was a swinging bridge across the creek, and uh -huh. the silo is still there, what's left of it. But the barn and that stuff was across the creek. 
<clears throat> I guess he built all of it. Yeah. And there, then again, that was probably why they settled because the water was there. And when they, I know Dad said when they first moved there, you could step across the creek. And then erosion came along, and by the time <clears throat> I was old enough to remember, there was there was a swinging bridge between the house on one side and then the farm buildings were on the other. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted, if you wanted uh, a tractor, and it was over here, and you wanted it over on the, where the house was, you had to go out on the road and go around because there wasn't, you know, there wasn't any way to get it across the bridge. It was just a footbridge. So, what else do you remember about the house? How was it heated? How was it what? Heated? How was it heated? It was heated with a wood stove. And it had a cistern out in the back that they got the water out of. It had a smokehouse. Uh, the rooms were small. I remember that. And there was a piano there. And I don't remember how come there was a piano there because as far as I know, nobody played the piano. Uh, but uh, the rooms were small. My grandfather liked to read. And I remember when he died, or when he, before he died, uh, he, got, he got to the point where he couldn't live by himself and he went to El Reno to live with one of his children, Shorty Foster. And uh, we went... Shirley and Jack and I went to, in the house and there were all sorts of old Saturday Evening Post magazines in there. And I have since picked myself that we didn't keep them because, you know, old, old magazines like that, it would have been great to have had we them now. <laughs> no, we don't need anything. We're already old. <laughs> but back in the 50s and, and like that, it would have been nice to and have And they tore those. the house down after he died. <clears throat> yeah, my dad tore the house down and and used the lumber from there to build to help build the house where he and mother lived on a different part of land, section of land. Hello. Can you take us through the steps of how it came to be in your possession? I mean, the, talk, talk us through who owned it when, as it came down the line. Well, yeah. Grandfather Foster owned it. Yeah, he's always owned it, yeah. and when he died, it went to all of his children. And then and the sheriff's deed was... And then after he, he died... My dad bought it. Uh, he bought it. Okay. The twenty fourth of January, nineteen fifty two. He bought. He bought the land. He bought the sibling. His siblings out. Mm -hmm. Yes. Purchased yes. Yes. Uh -huh. And uh, and that's been the only two owners. Yeah, both of them are gone now. Uh -huh. His dad, and, I mean, the dad and mother, and and it was left to the their three kids. And it, it's in a trust right now. So when the last of us dies, then it goes to our seven, children. Seven grandkids. <laughs> so I, I assume they, somebody will, it will eventually be sold. Which is kind of bad because, you know, it's been in the family all that time, but nobody farms. So, so you when your grandfather was farming, what were some of his crops? God, it had to have been wheat and... Feed, feed, oats, corn, yeah, I'm sure that's... Yeah, and of course they had a garden, you know, back then everybody had a garden. And they had pear trees yeah. around the house. Mm -hmm. When I got, when we got married, I remember that. And walnuts. My dad loved black walnuts and they had walnut trees. And the the lane from the, from the road to where the house is <clears throat> was, was long and that's where the uh, pear trees were. Mm -hmm. But the creek now is it's wide. Mm -hmm. it's, it's shale. You know, you know what shale is. <laughs> Red shale and it's washed out and got wider and wider. So. Well, where would they have taken their products to sell? To, to Kingfisher. Kingfisher. Uh -huh. Closer than Guthrie? Uh, yes, it would be closer than Guthrie. But Cashin is almost right in between Guthrie. We're about 17 miles both ways, mm -hmm. but the farm 
is closer that way. Yeah. But we felt we always did business in Kingfisher. My my father. And we always banked in Kingfisher and we hauled wheat to reading. But as far as what they what they grew there, they had to have had cattle and wheat and oats and you know, feed. And then when your father farmed it, what was what would he do? Same thing. <laughs> it's mostly just wheat though. Yeah. For, and yeah. grassland. I mean grass. And there like I like I said in the email, there's never been a mortgage on it. In all the years that it's been on it has never been mortgaged. My dad bought it outright. And it's had oil and gas leases, but never a mortgage on it. Which is you know, that's pretty unusual in this day and age. To have something that hasn't had a mortgage on it. But my husband has lots of. He talked a lot about his grandpa, because he made tamarack fishing poles for him to fish there in the creek. Yeah. And of course, he wasn't very old, so that's what he remembers a lot about him. We used to we used to walk down the creek. Um, when we were kids, we walked down the creek to <clears throat> just just to walk down the creek. And, and fish or just to walk down the creek and at that time the water was much clearer and cleaner than it is now. Now it's got a lot of moss and crap. It's just a mile, from, about a mile from the Cimarron River. Mm -hmm. it, you know, to the north is the Cimarron River. Um, what else? <laughs> <laughs> well and the children, the, since your, your father Stayed on the farm. What happened with the other children? Uh, let's see. Fanny. Uh, let's see. This is Fanny, and she lived in in Kingfisher. She was married, and I don't know what her husband did, but he had he had died. I never knew him. He had died a long time ago. I don't know what he did. Um, Worthy was asphyxiated. He was only in his twenties or so. Lucille never married. She moved to California and worked for a import export place. And uh, Shorty worked for the railroad and lived in El Reno. Uh, Charlie was a farmer. He lived at Big Four, didn't he? he? Yeah, he lived at Big Four. Yeah. He and Lucy lived at Big Four. Right there close to where the mm -hmm. farm is. And then my dad farmed and taught school. My dad uh, taught school in one-room schools for years. In fact, I had my first two years I spent in a one-room school. He taught at uh, Pleasant Ridge and Lincoln and Mount Everett, right? Mm -hmm. And he spent his last years at Cashin, mm -hmm. retired from Cashin. He retired the year I graduated in 54. Well, where had he got his education then? Central State in Edmond. <laughs> <laughs> you know, back then, uh, there weren't that many colleges around. I think uh, Kingfisher well, had a college. Well, he went to there. Yeah. But he... Uh, he played football in Kingfisher College. No, he played for high school, didn't he? Was it high school? I think, it, was, I think it was high school, yeah. He was a football player at Kingfisher High School. But uh, Kingfisher College didn't last all that long, and then... When he went came here to Cashin, he had to felt like he had to have more of a degree or education, what what have you, to to make up to keep up with the Joneses, so to speak, with the other teachers. And so he went to school at uh, Central State, and he would go weekends and so forth. He did it for years and years. And one of his classes that he took was photography, and that's what. That's what part of these pictures are. Like this is this is grandmother and grandfather Foster, Foster in 1937. That's one of his pictures, and and that's his car. That's one of his pictures. You know, just because he had to take pictures for class, so he took pictures of whatever. Well, 1937 with the depression going on, to be able to do that was well. It was, it was he, he, and he had three kids. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, of course, my mother didn't work, you know, because back 
Well, she worked. She worked. She kept care of us. How dare you say she? Yeah. Did. <laughs> she she definitely did did work. Uh, and you know we lived we lived in a house with oh, no sorry. electricity Can back you? when there wasn't any electricity. I'm sorry. And you had a your light when we finally got light after World War II was over with. We had a. We had a single light bulb coming down from the ceiling, and my God, we had electricity. You know, that was wonderful. And you had a radio, but we didn't have running water for years and years, and and no bathroom. And then he finally built a shower on the end of the house mm -hmm. that, uh, that he and Mother rented. They rented a house for years and years, and he, before the Overstreet's, uh, would sell the land. Mrs. Overstreet was, she wasn't married, her husband had died, and she wouldn't sell the land, but when she died, she deeded it to her nephew, and he and his wife finally decided they would sell the land that my mother and dad lived on to them. So after they sold it to him, he eventually built a house in 1950. I say I graduated in 54, and he started it in 54, and finished it in 55. So up until that time, the, the homestead had had been, the house had been there, but no one lived in it. Grandfather Foster, at, he moved, you know, he got, he got older and he was by himself and he moved to uh, El Reno with Shorty and his wife because we didn't have any, certainly we didn't have any room for him. <laughs> <laughs> and with us three kids, it would have driven him nuts, and Shorty and, El and uh, his wife didn't have any children around, so they could carry him. But they'd come out ever so often to bring him, and he'd go down to the farm or whatever. Well, what were some of the other buildings on the farm? There was a, there was a barn with a shop and granaries in the barn, in the silo. Uh, in the smokehouse. Yeah, in the smokehouse, over by the house. I have, that's about it. And those big shale rocks is was usually the foundation for things. And so when my husband was doing the farming then, I'd drive the pickup down there and I'd pick up those rocks. You see, I've got rocks everywhere we went. <laughs> I won't tell you what he said. I've been throwing those rocks away all these years, and now you're carrying them home. <laughs> so, and they're they're out out here. Yeah, there's rocks all around, but they're big shale rocks. But we've found lots of little things down there, mm -hmm. little bottles, and the kid grandkids have all been down there. Yeah, hunting stuff. One time, Paul and I went down there, and we walked we walked along the creek bank. And you know, back then, <clears throat> you you had bottles and you filled up the sack and you threw it over the creek bank. I mean, that was just <laughs> what you did back then. Cause what is it, you didn't have landfills and all this other stuff. And yeah, it's amazing some of the bottles and, and stuff that mm -hmm. you can find. Probably not now because I'm not sure people have gone along and picked them up. But at one time they were there mm -hmm. to pick up. Well, what were holidays like in this particular house? That I I do not know. Mm -hmm. No, see, like I said, I was only four when my grandmother Foster died, and I just I don't remember. Uh, I do know that after we got old enough to know there wasn't a Santa Claus, we didn't <laughs> <laughs> we didn't really have Christmas. I mean, Christmas was just kind of another day, and that was it. Yeah, because my I thought it was strange because they they didn't do all that at Christmas, and at our house it was a big deal. You know, we just, you know, kids we'd go to school and we'd come back from Christmas vacation, and everybody, what'd you get for Christmas? <laughs> did anything? <laughs> of course, we didn't celebrate Christmas. <laughs> it just we just didn't do it. Whether that was, I don't know whether Dad was raised that way. I don't ever remember him saying anything about going to church. Do you? No, I, I remember him saying the grandma did. Maybe she didn't take it. By <laughs> she might not have. <laughs> I remember him talking about her. Yeah. Like, I was telling Colleen before you got here, I said, the, the one thing I particularly remember about my grandmother Foster was, uh, 
I, I was a little kid and she always had a candy bar, a Hershey candy bar in the refrigerator icebox in the ice box when we would come down there. She always had, and she, you know, they were they were short on money. They were like everybody else. They didn't have much money for frills or candy or whatever. <laughs> and Grandpa had to have his tobacco, and she bought tobacco, but she also had enough money that she would get a candy bar for us kids. And always got, it was just, maybe it's just one candy bar, but it was divided off in those little squares, so everybody got you know, got a chunk. <laughs> so but that was. So how old was he when he died? Grandpa Foster. Oh gosh, you know I don't well, know. He died in fifty-one. Uh, well, she died in. <clears throat> I don't know. We we'll have to figure. He that made out. the run and he died the day of, in. Uh, April the twenty. Twenty-second. Uh huh. But I don't remember how old he was. Yeah. Well, he, uh, well, let's see. My father entered the, entered Oklahoma April 22nd, 1889, and passed away eight, April 22nd, 1950. He had returned, retained his residency on this homestead for exactly 61 years. He was only, he was only 61 years old. No. He was oh, a resident. Yeah. There. He was a resident there. Yeah. 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 He I think he was ninety something. Yeah. He'd have to be because he already had four kids. <laughs> Unless they started early. Uh, but yeah. uh, anyway. Would you have chores when you would visit the farm growing up? Did I have chores? No. No. <laughs> no. The hey, once I was just a little kid. I mean, I was just a little kid. <laughs> well, as she, when when Grandma Foster died, I was like four years old. So no, I didn't have any chores. Now, the the boys didn't because we didn't live down there. Now, when we grew up, we had chores. You know, at home we had chores. But your folks lived down there. After they were married. After yeah. they were married, mm -hmm. yeah. They yeah. lived there with me. I don't know how old. I don't know when they left. When he started, had rented Over Street Slam. And, and where was that in relation to the farm, the Over Street? Uh, it's south. It's south. Um, Probably eight miles. Yeah. We used to, we used to drive cattle. After Dad got the farm, we used to move cattle from our place, from where we lived, by the road. We herded them down the road. <laughs> if you can imagine, we herded them down the road to the Foster farm down there by Big Four. And you know, you don't realize how many bridges there are to cross. <laughs> or how many intersections there are to go through until you've got a herd of cattle and you're back here and the head cow's up there leading them and you just hope to heaven she doesn't turn and go down that road. <laughs> we had some hairy times, I remember, but we always got it done. Uh, it'd take a while to go eight miles with it. It did. Yeah, that was an all day job. And of course you had, you had mama cows with baby calves, and you had the bull, and he was always dragging up the rear, and and we had one old cow that was the lead cow, and she was she was good because she'd made the trip a whole lot of times, so she knew where to go. <laughs> and I think that was in the Foster men that they liked to the move cows. <laughs> yeah. Which we did it, but not that far. Well, you know, you didn't have you didn't have. You didn't have trucks and trailers back then like you do now, and so you just put them on the road. Well, would you be on a horse or would you be walking? We'd be walking. Yeah. You didn't even have a horse mm -hmm. then, did you? Mm -hmm. Didn't have horses. My dad didn't like a horse. Uh, one time, he and my mother were in a hospital, I think maybe in El Reno. They were in a hospital someplace, and a little girl came in that had been riding a horse, and she fell off. and. Her foot, she got drugged, 
and they had to amputate her arm. And after that, anybody said horse, he'd say, no, no, <laughs> nothing to it. So we didn't have horses. But uh, no, you, you followed, you walked behind them. <laughs> well, you, you didn't know any different, so it was okay. <laughs> And everybody did things like that. The roads were probably dirt at that time. Still are. <laughs> Still are. Shale. Some of them are shale. But there's always dirt under that shale, too. Well, you mentioned smokehouse. Did they have hogs or pigs that they, that they actually smoked? Yeah, they had hogs. Oh, oh. They had hogs. And I'm sure they smoked beef also. But mainly it would have been hogs and of course they had chickens. I mean everybody had chickens. <laughs> you have chickens? No but I think everybody has a, a different way to slaughter a chicken. Is there a trick in your family? Uh, <laughs> yeah mine is. What I just stepped on their head and jerked it off. Well my mother put a stick a stick down and she stood on the stick and pulled up and then when you pull up you, then you throw it like that because all the blood splatters and you throw it like that and I can remember if she get blood or gosh darn it I got blood on myself. <laughs> My kids think it was awful though because I, I just stepped on their head and jerked it off. And then you scalded them and picked them and that's just what you did though. That's what you exactly that's and what you did. And you ate did. it that day mm -hmm. usually. Well my dad liked to have it overnight so mother Kill it, kill it, and dress it, and then put it in the refrigerator in in water to kind of get some of the wild, quote unquote, wild taste out of it. And then she'd cook it the next day. So she'd take the one that she had in the refrigerator and cook it and put another one in. I mean, when you at harvest time, it was fried chicken every day. Mm -hmm. It's fried in grease. Man, it was good. <laughs> <laughs> and we'd haul meals down to the down to the I think the reason I always thought I never liked picnics is because we'd haul meals to the field to harvest when we were cutting wheat down there. And when you drove in the, the driveway, it, it had washed and it went down like that and it was very rough and mother would always spill the gravy. <laughs> and back then you didn't have the nice plastic containers like what you have now. You had the... Uh, uh, Refrigerator, dish, refrigerator dishes with the glass lids on them. Remember? Pyrex? Pyrex. Pyrex, yeah. Mm -hmm. And always, invariably, she'd spill the gravy. And we'd have mashed potatoes and gravy and corn or green beans or peas, whatever, from the garden. And fried chicken. And you never stopped the combine. You kept the combine going because the wheat had to be cut. And harvest lasted a lot longer then too than what it does now. <laughs> Slightly, you know. So, but uh, I don't know. I just never did really care for picnics because <laughs> <laughs> we had outside all summer long. It seemed to me like with with that, and it was a hassle to pack it up, take it down there, bring it back home, unpack it, wash the dishes, clean up. It was just a hassle. And did you do it twice a day, like for lunch and dinner, or just once? Just once a day, and then uh, they she'd take down uh, something in the evening, but sandwiches or something like that. Nothing as elaborate as the moon, noon meal. You didn't worry about cholesterol or anything <laughs> like that, because you shoot, you worked it off. You know, you didn't you didn't sit at home and watch TV. You were outside. You didn't have a TV. Yeah, yeah. you didn't have a TV. Yeah, exactly. Do you remember driving your first tractor? Yes, I do. It was a little Fordson, mm -hmm. and uh, it had a, a brake and a, a clutch on it. You know, if you know what a little Fordson is, they're kind of like a car with a steering wheel. They're not the great big tractor. But anyway, I let it on the clutch too fast, and it jumped forward, and I ran into something, and it bent the very front. <laughs> And it stayed that way until I left home, and I don't know what happened to it. <laughs> but I, I plowed out in the field when the boys went were in the Navy. I helped my dad out in the field, and we we rode hay and hauled hay and 
play out and I hauled wheat. But that, by that time, he had a self-propelled combine. So he ran the combine and I hauled the wheat. And we worked. All summer long, we worked. But it was, that's just, again, that's just what you did. And uh, until I was 16, and didn't have a driver's license. My mother hauled wheat after the boys were gone to to the Navy. Jack went, Shirley went in the Navy, and then after Jack got out of high school, he graduated. He he went in the Navy. My dad never, my dad never went to the service because uh, he was he was a farmer and a school teacher, and he had three children, and he was older. But I think. Before it ended, before the war ended, it was getting close to where he might be called, might be called up, but fortunately it ended, so he didn't have to. And what, what high school did you graduate from? Cashin. And your two brothers, too? Uh -huh. And the one-room school that you went to was called? Mount Everett. Mm -hmm. Let's see, Jack went to, or Shirley went to, he went to Lincoln, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Thank you. What's the one over there across from Clifford King? Is that Lincoln? Oh, yeah. I think so. And then the one on the highway. Right Pleasant Ridge. Pleasant Ridge. Yeah. yeah. Are any of them still standing? Hmm. Uh, I don't think so. The one over on the highway across from Foreman's, what'd they do with it? Did they yeah. move that up to the well, museum in Kingfisher? I don't know, but it's not there. Anymore. Yeah, it's not there anymore. I don't know what happened to the one at Mount Everett, but they're they're not, as far as I know, they're not standing. But we used to, you know, get in the pickup and and the four of us every morning and drive to to school. Shirley and Jack and myself, I was sitting like this because Dad was over here driving and I was sitting like this and of course the gear shift was down here and the road would be muddy and he'd be like driving like that. <laughs> the roads were always muddy. Yeah, the roads were always muddy. And we'd have recess. You'd go outside and play and there were swings. And he always had the, the school rooms were heated with a coal stove you know, pot belly coal stove. And Dad liked to keep, uh, in the wintertime, he would put a pot of beans on and we'd have, so you had a hot meal because back then too, uh, people were so poor that a lot of times the kids, that was the only hot meal they had was the school lunch. And it was not provided by the school. I mean, he, he paid for it out of his pocket now, granted, it was only beans, but beans <laughs> are beans. I mean, they, they filled them up, certainly. Or he'd have cocoa. So, uh, and it was all grades. Yeah, all eight grades. How many kids, students? I had, well, I had three in my class in the first and second grade. I think we had maybe 20, 20 probably, probably 20. 20 in all eight grades. But you know, when I, when I left Mount Everett in the second grade and came up here to Cashin, I knew my all of my addition, subtraction, division, multiplication tables, knew all that, how to spell and how to write, and came up here and they didn't know any of that. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it had its advantages. And you certainly got along, learned to get along with a variety of people, different ages. And of your people. father taught all of all of those grades? Mm -hmm. He taught all the grades. Yeah. Yeah, he was, and then a, when he came to Cashin, he eventually was a uh, high school principal. He, he never did, he didn't have any aspirations to be superintendent. He said he quit, he quit teaching the year I graduated because he said the kids were getting on his nerves. <laughs> And they really would now. <laughs> yeah, they really would. I'm, I'm sure he has turned over in his grave several times at some of the things the kids do nowadays. He, he wouldn't have tolerated it at all. You know, because back then, you spanked. If kids got out of line, you spanked them. 
and I think some of them could still stand to be explained. <laughs> so he would teach all day and then go home and farm it in the afternoon and end of the night? You got it. When you got home, when we got home, my mother had supper ready. It was supper, it wasn't dinner. We had supper ready and on the table. They ate and then he and the boys went outside and did whatever farming needed to be done. You know, plowed or whatever. Grind corn. Grind corn, <laughs> yes. Yeah, grind corn. We had a hammer mill and you ground corn. But uh, you didn't you didn't go in and sit down from school and read a book or whatever. You went outside and worked. You ate you ate supper, you went outside and worked, and when it got dark you came in and if you had homework you did it. And if not, you read a magazine and then you went to bed at nine o'clock. Because it was dark. <laughs> and you had a coal oil lamp, or finally you had electricity, but uh, that was a long time coming. Of course, that was, you know, the start of REA, Rural Electric, Electrification Administration, REA, and that was, wasn't until after the war, so that was in 44, so I've been mm -hmm. yeah. 45 or 50. We didn't have a TV until after I graduated from high school. So what would you do for fun? For fun? <laughs> my dad loved over. my dad loved to go to the movie. He would go we went to the movie. Yeah, every time it changed. Every time it changed in Kingfisher. There were two theaters. And every time it changed in Kingfisher, we went to the movie. Well, he and mother went to the movie. Sometimes we went and sometimes we didn't, depending on what was playing. But it was like ten or fifteen cents to go to the movie then too. So. My granddaughter was doing a thing for school, and she said, what did you do for fun? I said, we didn't have any. <laughs> <laughs> no, you really didn't have really? You didn't have time for fun. You were too busy working. <laughs> and when you're the oldest, you really do. Yeah. 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 Did you do any sewing? Her mother taught me more about sewing after I got married. Uh -huh. I had it in home ex, but her, she helped me more with sewing, and when I got pregnant the first the first time she helped me make baby clothes mm -hmm. and all of that so yeah. she did my it. my mother made all of our clothes and she made them for every time she made her a skirt she made me one <laughs> yeah where would she get her fabric we used feet sacks you know you've heard a lot about feet sacks we use uh, i can remember going to buy chicken feed and well we yeah. don't want we don't want that one because <laughs> there isn't any others that go with it. Let's see, we need this one over here because the, these two sacks match. So you got two sacks of this one because there was two sacks that was the same print. <laughs> but uh, and my mother baked bread. We didn't we didn't think we didn't realize how good homemade bread was for bake for us. Baker's bread was a treat. Oh my goodness, that was wonderful. And then we found out that mother's bread was pretty good after all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then, so then I had to do it. I've done it forever, too. Yeah. <laughs> My grandkids say, you need to teach us how to make bread. And I said, you have to stop and watch. <laughs> yeah, and it, and it takes time. And people are, you know, they're, everybody's in a rush. They want to take the time to mix it up and let it set and then go back and mix it up and let it rise. And, and bake it, but uh, she always did that for every for every meal or just special. Every meal, we did, I, as I said, we didn't have baker's bread. It's usually we, biscuits for breakfast. Yeah, <laughs> from scratch. Yeah, uh -huh, scratch mm -hmm. biscuits. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And then you came home and you had this uh, had bread or cornbread for supper. And if you didn't have fried chicken, what would you be having? We had sauerkraut and weenies. We had... Um, Did you butcher? You know, Dad really didn't like to... Butcher. He didn't like the taste of butchered homegrown beef. He didn't really like the taste of it, so we didn't butcher. Now, we did. We processed hogs. We had bacon and ham like that, but he didn't care for beef, so he mother bought beef in the grocery store, very sparingly. Uh, 
What else did we have? Sauerkraut and weenies and fried potatoes. And she said she cooked all of the wild game that the boys shot. Oh, yeah. No matter what it was. <laughs> she wouldn't clean it. That was a rule. She wouldn't clean it. But she'd cook it. Like <laughs> fish. Never clean the fish that I know of. And I grew up the same way. I First time Jay went fishing, my ex-husband, first time he went fishing and brought back three or four fish, and he said, here... And I looked at him and I said, what? He said, well, clean them. I said, I don't know how and I don't intend to, intend to learn. <laughs> and I didn't. I have never cleaned a fish. I have. Don't do it. I did. I, I've, did. Cleaned, I've cleaned uh, birds, you know, dove and quail and squirrel. We've eaten squirrel. Yeah, my kids think that's terrible. <laughs> I said, we ate squirrel and frog. Oh, yes, frog legs. Oh, frog legs are yummy. They're good. And uh, turtle? No, never ate any turtle. Now, one time, uh, one of the boys brought home some uh, mussels, and Mother tried to fix those, just like eating a piece of rubber. <laughs> it was terrible. <laughs> never did that again. <laughs> I don't even know what that looks like. A mussel? Oh, the they look like clams, you know, oh. the shell. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know what purpose they serve, but they're here for some purpose or other. So, but anyway. But uh, so the boys went hunting, but you didn't. Oh, I tagged along. Uh, but they they went to hunting ba mainly without me, and also they set traps. That was another way they got money too. He set they set traps and and caught uh, muskrat and skunk and possum, and skinned them, put them on board, stretched the hide, dried it, and then you took it to. There was a fur trader and kingfisher and one in Guthrie. I think they got better money in the one in Guthrie, and they took it to they'd take them to Guthrie, and that was their extra money, spending money. So. I guess that's it. <laughs> <laughs> what was bath time like back in the day? We had a wash tub. <laughs> a square wash tub. And you put it in front of the sink and... and uh, you Remember, was last got dirty water. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, everybody got clean water. We didn't. <laughs> we all got clean water. But uh, you took a bath in the, in the uh, bathtub and... In the wintertime, it was, I don't think you took a bath every night. Now, my dad took a bath every day. And there was an unwritten, unwritten rule. When he was taking a bath, you did not go in the kitchen. You did not go in the kitchen. <laughs> but the rest of us, in one time, Jack was, my youngest brother Jack <clears throat> was drying off in front of the stove and he bent over and <laughs> burned his butt on the stove. I mean, it just sizzled. I will never forget that. And oh, he cried and cried and cried because it, you know, it hurt. <laughs> so he didn't do that. <laughs> he didn't do, get too close to the stove while you were wet. <sighs> um, yeah, bathtub. You didn't wash your hair every day like they do now. But we washed it. Mother had a big crock, and we caught rainwater in it, and we washed our hair with rainwater. Mm -hmm. And it was so soft afterwards. I mean, your hair felt so soft and, and smooth after it was washed with rainwater. And vinegar. <laughs> Used vinegar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To cut the soap, you yeah. know. Well, for laundry, would it ring or ring or washers? Ring or washer? <laughs> uh, you know, I don't remember uh, my mother ringing clothes out, but I remember a, uh, a a washing machine that ran on gas, and you'd have to, you know, pump it to get it started. And she used that. And it was the son of a gun to get started, and it was noisy and it smoked. But it, I suppose she pr probably when she was first married, she. 
Once a week you did it. Yeah. Mondays was wash day. Was wash day. Mm -hmm. That's usually when we had had beans for supper because they were put on in the morning and simmered while, you know, you were doing the wash. Of course, you had a clothesline. And then you used the water to mop the floors. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Waste not, want not. <laughs> so, what else? <laughs> <laughs> we probably need to discuss how each one of you met your husbands. You go first. I, <clears throat> I moved here from over around the Guthrie area, and I was a junior in high school when we moved here, and he was a senior. So we, I guess, hit it off, and we were together ever since. <laughs> yeah, because after he got out of high school, I was a senior, and then he joined the Navy, and we got married when he joined the, when he joined the Navy. We've been here ever since. After his four years in the service, we've been here ever since. And Our three kids, they all graduated here too. Did he farm or did mm -hmm. he? Well, he worked for 21 years for a wholesale company in Oklahoma City. And uh, they were changing businesses, so he quit. He was already helping his dad farm anyway. And so after his dad died, then he farmed all the time. Mostly wheat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wheat and oats. Oats was a one-time thing, I think, because <laughs> it, it made a big crop, and it, they're itchy as they can be, so they're hard to work with, so they didn't do that again. But cattle, had cattle mostly. But we... And then when my other brother got out of the Navy, and he, he went to OSU. Yeah, he went to OSU and graduated with a degree in geology. Couldn't find a job. He found a job, but it didn't didn't pan out. And he went back and he got a teaching certificate. He went to Denver <clears throat> and taught school out there. He taught school out there, and then he'd come home in the summertime and he'd farm with with uh, Shirley and yeah. Shirley and Stead. So, you know, the boys kept in it. Kept in the farm. They didn't dislike it that much then. <laughs> no, I they enjoyed no, Shirley, it. Shirley liked he it. He loved it. He in fact, he got the wheat sowed when he wasn't feeling good. Yeah. He got the wheat sowed and uh, two months later he died. So he had pancreatic cancer. And we, did, we didn't know it. So, so we, then we had to combine the crop in the spring. Mm -hmm. And I met my husband. Uh, he graduated. He graduated in yeah. Colleen's class, and I knew him from then. And he joined the service. He went to in the army, and I went to OSU for one year. He came back, and we got married that fall. And I worked in Kingfisher until we had children, and you know I stayed home and took care of them. And, and then then I went to work. And, worked here and there. We got a divorce and I went to Oklahoma City. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I, have, I have three children and they all graduated from Cashew too. That's three and three children? Mm -hmm. Six and you mentioned seven? Well, uh, the brother Jack has two girls. Okay. Yeah. They, one lives in Colorado and one lives in Arizona. So they don't, they've never been They've never been around the farm, really. No. Well, they were so much younger mm -hmm. than, than our kids. Than our kids, too. Jack got married later, and, and uh, uh, they were just a lot younger than our kids. Mm -hmm. And, of course, they were out there, and our kids were here, and they really had nothing in common with them. Just like the holidays, you know, we'd go over to Grandma and Granddad's, and, and uh, her kids and my kids. It was just six kids, and they all knew each other, and pretty well got along pretty good together. Yeah, yeah. She, Colleen, had a girl, a, a, a son, and two girls, and I had two girls and a boy. I mean, two boys and a girl. So, 
we had three boys and three girls. <laughs> So what's going on with the farm today? We ran it out after, after Shirley died. The next year we had a farm sale. <clears throat> sold all the machinery and, and a guy that lives here, he farms all of it. Big Four and this is where the family lived. No. 160 acres, the original 160 still. It's, uh, it's still intact? It's still intact. Uh, yeah, we, yeah, yeah, the original 160 plus the 80 next to it, yeah, it's all it's still. still uh -huh. and did your family retain the mineral rights or did you sell them off? Well, they retained, they retained these, them. These, uh, <clears throat> the other kids in his family got okay. mineral rights down there. <laughs> So we all share them, but where her dad built his house and all, they, they have all the minerals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But down there, it's it's <coughs> shared by, I don't know how many. <laughs> we just got through leasing it, but I don't yeah. know how many of the others there is, but they all got an equal share. Well, did that help sustain the farm back when they first? Well, I think it must have. When I, I noticed when I was looking, uh, at the records the other day, there were several oil and gas leases on that place during the years. Yeah, there was. And then, then uh, there was a, a well or two. A producing well on there that uh, has been. When it first started, it was quite a well. But it's that was, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. That was. Mm, was that before Dad died, or down there now? Yeah. Oh no. That was be. after he died. Oh yeah. My dad died in 77. It was even <clears throat> after your mother died. Yeah. yeah. So, but it's had a well or two on it before. I don't know how long they lasted, but. I don't think they were ever very successful, even though they were, the land was leased. I don't think it was all that profitable. But it, every little bit helps. Sure. Any major power lines going through? No. Some farmers have had to deal with that. You know, there are times. Uh, really, the, the wind things, El Carchi, they've had a terrible time. People don't, people don't want it. Mm -hmm. I'm out of blame. Yeah. But there's not any high lines there. Well, there is there at the home place where Mother and Dad live, isn't there a power oh, line out there? Well, yeah, the, but west I mean, of the on, house. The, on this. Oh, no, nothing on the, on the foster farm. So the next 100 years, what do you see happening with it? After we die, it'll be sold. Unless one of them's got enough <clears> money <throat> to, to keep it. And I don't know. I don't know who it would be. And there's only one. My grandson is the only foster. Yeah. So I don't know. And <clears throat> my, my middle son, Paul, is he would be the only well, him and Steve both will be the only two that would even remotely think about farming. Uh, the other boy is a CPA and he has no desire. Paul said he would like to farm, but there's no money in it and there isn't. Well, if you don't have it. <clears throat> I don't know how farmers do it now with the cost of, of fertilizer and feed and Insurance. Yeah, every time we go to the tax place, I'd say mm, no. And, and <laughs> no. taxes. I mean, taxes just go up and up and up. It's really frustrating. Machinery is unreal. Oh, machinery, astronomical. Yeah, gasoline to run it. Diesel. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We well, used to diesel was cheap. Yeah. But it's not anymore. It's higher than gasoline. But used to diesel was cheaper than ten, gas. Eight or ten cents mm -hmm. a gallon. Yeah. And then climate, rain, mm -hmm. oh yeah, drought. Yeah, farmer's the biggest gambler in the world. Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. I mean, and just like uh, this rain and so forth, and they talk about hail. My God, that's, that's the last thing they need is hail right now. I was looking at the wheat coming out here, and it looks great. We've had rain, it, the heads have filled out, they look, wheat looks good. Now, if you just don't have any hail. Mm -hmm. 
keep your fingers crossed. As soon as the sun shines, it looks like they can jump in there. They start. (laughs) Then it rains. Is it about time to harvest? Well, May usually the end of May. They try to try to, but really it'd be better if it was June. But they get in a hurry. Well, after you after you've planted it and nursed it along, you just you just can't wait to get out there and get it, you know. Yeah, we after Shirley died that we were gonna. I said, Granddad said we probably couldn't do it, and I don't know if we can. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's an ordeal. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot of work, but. You know, I, uh, my husband and I lived out in the country, so we raised our kids on a farm, and it's a good place. It was a good place to raise children, as far as I was concerned. Now I don't know whether it's all that good of. Yeah, we we took our grandkids. We had six grandkids, and we took them down to this place a lot, and they had a lot of fun down there. We. If we were fixing fence, we had a picnic, mm-hmm. and they could run up and down the shale. They had a lot of fun down there. Building some connection to mm-hmm. them. To them. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's one spot in the creek that was more of a hole, and they could fish in it. <laughs> and there's uh, buffalo wallers down there, too. Yeah, my son-in-law never, he said, that can't be. Well, they are. <laughs> were there ponds on the property? One. There's one down there. Natural or man-made? Well, I don't know if it was man-made, but it it always had water, and they've tried to, the guy that rents it has tried to keep it up, so I don't know if it... Maybe naturally (laughs) man-made. A little bit of both. Yeah, they haven't done much to it, so it must have some natural water there, but it just the one pond. Yeah, well, with the creek going through it. Yeah, uh, the cattle always had always had access to it. Yeah. And that, you know, that presented a problem too because cattle would get down in there as as the creek got deeper and deeper, cattle would get down in there and then they couldn't get back out and, you know. Go on somebody else's property. Go on somebody else, <laughs> because you had to have a floodgate between the your place and the neighbors. And every time it rained, Go down, check, and see if the floodgate was was still up. And if the water was real strong, of course, you couldn't get in and fix it until the water went down. And invariably, your cattle got on them, or their cattle got on you. <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, that's just part of it. No. <laughs> <laughs> Is she saying that's enough? How do you say? It, oh, it's two o'clock. Do you have anything else you want to say before we before we close out? <sighs> well, I can't think of anything else. Do you have anything else, Jill? Mm-hmm. Well, thank you very much then. Oh, you're more than welcome. Thank you. I hope it does some good. Okay. <laughs>